All right, YouTube, it's Chris with Working Hands. Welcome back. This is going to be part two, Will It Run, of the 1950 DeSoto. And I know it's been a while, and a lot of these clips were filmed probably in a year's time. Bits and pieces here and there whenever I could make it fit. And uh, so without further ado, this is Hernando. Right on this DeSoto all the head bolts are the same and uh, I want to clean the threads out in the block so I don't get any kind of uh, false reading I'm actually going to try to torque the heads to what they're supposed to be so I got this other bolt that is the uh, same thread same diameter same thread count um, and what I'm going to do is cut a notch and I want to make it like a tab even though it's not cutting any threads, but I want to be able to clean the crud out. So uh, I'm going to show you how I do that. try to do is leave a sharp face here for cutting that crud out and you need enough relief in there for the crud to go somewhere otherwise it'll bind up and uh, you'll end up breaking a bolt off if you push too hard. Okay I'm using my pliers here because it's going to get hot. two or three random cuts. All we want to do is pick those that crud out of those threads and you may have to run it down in there two or three times but as long as you get it right, get it clean. You get a good reading on your torque. All right, what we're gonna do here is chase these threads out. And obviously, I've already ran it down in one of the holes, but all we're gonna do is just try to get it started straight and twist it on down in there. I'm probably gonna put a dab of silicone on each one of these bolts just because they are. Uh, straight into the water jackets. I'm going to reuse the old copper head gasket. I'm going to assume it's been replaced before because it says Felpro on it. But it looks to be in really good shape. Like I said, I'm not sure who's done what to this. And there was a box of, uh, of well, a lot of random Mopar parts but they were they uh, they were either new old stock or they were actual just old parts that were bought back then I did get all the valves to cooperate I'll show you that in just a second I got some crud to clean up on the pistons Sorry, the camera's wobbling. I've got it held up with a zip tie. And if at any point on this video or the last one, it sounds like I'm out of breath or I'm straining, one, it's really hot in here. And two, 
I'm very short and it's hard for me to reach over these wide fenders. I should have showed you that before I wiped it off. It actually looked like a complete bolt again. All the crud between the threads formed new threads. I'll see if I can get it on the next one. Really, I don't. Pro I probably don't need the vice grips on there. Probably thread it in by hand. Seems to go pretty easy. is bad it's actually got more coolant on it just because it's further back and the block is tilted backwards I'm gonna start this one in the next hole and then I'll spin the motor over and show you the uh, valves moving yeah see this one still sticks a little bit sometimes but it's loose enough I can shove it with my fingers. Oh, that one wants to stick now too. Make a liar out of it. Now it's working. See how it goes. Nope. I'll go back through them all, lube them up real good before I put the head back on. For now, I'll speed through cleaning these threads out. Sometimes my brain gets caught up on some simple stuff and I'm not really sure where to go with it and I can't focus and then I just kind of drop a project for a while. I got to go work on some other stuff. Um, that's what happened with this DeSoto. Uh, still working on the valves a little bit at a time. Unfortunately, it's been like 10 months since I've had to do anything with it. Um, so this is what my problem was. Uh, this was the oil filter canister. And if it looks like I cut it in half, it's because I did. Uh, this is a rare thing that they came up with and it took me a while to research and find out because all the ones I saw on uh, pictures, internet, everybody else's cars, the oil feed line went in the side somewhere and then it came out the bottom on this one the line went straight in the top and came straight out the bottom and I was very confused by that because there was usually a bolt in the top you take the bolt out the lid comes off you change the filter element uh, so 
when I took this off, I realized it was one piece after I pried around this seam and everything, just trying to get it apart. And um, so I did end up cutting it in half and I found out that it is a one piece unit. Now you can buy these new and I want to say they're around like uh, $40, $50 for an oil filter. And then I thought, well, maybe I'll just buy the, the housing with the replaceable filter uh, used somewhere off eBay or something like that. And uh, they're like $130, roughly. Um, and I, I'm not willing to drop that right now, plus money's tight for everybody. So uh, I'm going to show you what I did here. Okay, so what I've got here is this remote uh, oil filter mount. Um, I've got a 96 four-wheel drive S10 Blazer. It's a 4.3. Um, I'm parting it out. Uh, I'm actually going to use the frame, I hope, for another project. Uh, I'd like to get some content on that out pretty soon, maybe. But, you know, things happen. Uh, anyways, so this has a line that went into the oil filter. Um, it came out and I, I think uh, this one line, yeah, that top line right there goes straight through. Um, that went through to an oil cooler. Uh, I don't really think that I'll need that on an old engine uh, like that Flathead 6. So what I'm going to do is I've cut the lines off of this block. It's made like an AC block. And I'm going to tap one side of it with a probably an eighth inch NPT and put a pipe plug in it and that'll block that straight line and then the other side um, I bought some brake line fittings because that's essentially what is the, the hard line is made out of for the oil filter um, the original one so uh, I bought some adapter fittings and I'm hoping that the half 20 thread I can tap this half 20, screw that fitting in there, and then it's got the inverted flare for the 5 16 24 brake line thread. And uh, so I'm hoping I can just kind of remote mount this housing uh, in the fender well, or even just kind of let it hang for right now until I make sure the engine's even going to run. All right, I already got the other side done up for this. Uh, so I figured I'd show you how I did it. No special tools or anything like, like that. It's just a standard uh, Harbor Freight drill press. Um, so let me double check which drill bit I got in here. This is the 7 16 so that's the tap drill for the quarter MPT. And I'm going to kind of freehand it. Uh, I made sure to sand the, block, uh, the back of this block nice and flat so my drill bit will have a good chance of starting centered in the hole. You got to start it slow and it'll try to jump around so you really got to hold on to it. Once you get drilling it should follow the hole pretty well. got a mark on the drill bit with a paint marker so I don't go too deep and drill that flange off the other side. And really that's it for that side. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and switch the drills out. tap drill for the half 20 is 29.64. If you don't happen to know that, um, you can look it up on the internet. Just a tap drill is what it's called. That means you're drilling for the minimum diameter of the thread. So when you run the tap down in there, you cut the top, the top diameter out or the maximum diameter out.
this is the half 20 tap. I know the lighting's horrible and I apologize for that. We're gonna put just a little bit of uh, liquid wrench on there. Just a little something to loop. Now if you look there, the uh, center point in the back of this, and I'll show you what that's for later. Uh, I've actually got a tap handle that fits this, so I can kind of eyeball starting it out. Having a handle like this, you got two sides to hold on if you needed to. I was more or less holding the vise with my other hand. We're going to add a clamp here. We're going to clamp this vise down this time. We're going to need both hands. If you don't know, MPT is a pipe thread. The T stands for taper. So if you look at that tap, it's got a taper to it. The problem with a taper thread is you're supposed to go uh, almost 75% of the thread on the tap uh, for it to be the right seat depth for a fitting uh, because the, a tapered thread seats on the taper, so that means whenever you tighten it up in there, that's where it seals. Uh, a straight thread like the half 20 seals on a flange typically. What we're going to do is eyeball that tap standing up. Kind of giving it a little twist by hand just to get it started. And then I've got this little center point. I'm going to tighten it up in a chuck. center point in the back of that. Now, I'm just holding just a flight spring pressure here because it's auto returns. So, just barely enough pressure to hold that down in there. And I'm doing that because I don't have a tap handle big enough to square on the back of this, so I'm going to use a crescent wrench. If you were to use just one handle and turn it, chances are your pressure is not going to be even in a full circle, and you're going to waller that hole out. So you just keep that downward pressure, and don't get tangled up in your cords. You don't have to force the tap in, once it grabs, it's going to pull. saw that my clamp slipped. Here I am making a joke out of this. <clears throat> we're not too far in it, so it should still be safe. And the main thing is, even if we're not exactly straight to the hole, those threads are going in straight. And I don't know if that makes sense. 
we're not wallering the hole out as we're going around. This is only to plug off that through line and that remote oil filter. So as long as it seals, and we'll put some pipe dope on there. The bad thing is there, clearly I'm not 75% of that thread. trying to get that fitting in there. Most people know this. I've been to some auctions and stuff and I've bought some storage bins. And uh, whenever you take something apart, anything, if you're gonna scrap it out or just get rid of it, save the fittings, save some of the bolts. You don't have to have an uh, excessive amount. There's no need to wind up on hoarders. But it's always good to have some extra pieces. I helped clean out a shop and I ended up finding some MPT plugs. They work great for in the back of carburetors and intakes, you know, things like that. Save that stuff, it comes in handy. this block's aluminum so I'm, I'm holding it real close up here to the handle and I am getting it tight but I don't want to force it to rip the threads out because I'll have no chance of sealing that. Now well, like I said this is a half 13 straight thread and it does have the uh, inverted taper seat if you were going to use it on a line but Cheat. I'm going to use a little bit of pipe dope on it also because I can't go as deep as what it needs to go. I'm just going to snug it up. Probably even tighten up a little bit more when I put the line in it. But I'll make sure to hold the other side with a wrench. So that's that's what we've got here. And uh, I'm gonna have to come back to this another day. So it's getting late. I'm tired. And starting to drip sweat. So we'll end that here for now. So this is where I'm at with the DeSoto. That's how I fixed, I can't do quotes and hold the camera at the same time, but fixed my oil filter situation. That is the modified remote oil filter housing from that uh, 96 Blazer out back. This, the, the brake line with the spring on it, that is a brake line. I took it off a 1959 Chevy rear end I had uh, because the line that was on there was not long enough. And it, if you can see it kind of sway in there, that's not a permanent setup. We'll get it fixed better. I got the head back on, obviously. All the valves are moving. Uh, the throttle linkage rod that goes from here it's actually the other side of it on the other pivot it goes down underneath the floorboard to the pedal uh, that pivot ball down at the bottom broke so I'm gonna have to come up with something on that I gotta get creative uh, but beyond that I think I got my wiring figured out uh, I'd like to thank the me from a year ago because I remembered to mark the coil wires positive and negative. Uh, 
I started putting this thing back together and I had wires that I didn't know what they were for. I mean, I knew what they were for, but I didn't know where they went. And I uh, kind of panicked a little bit. I uh, got it figured out. Because it took me so long to get it back together, I forgot stuff like that. And I did end up losing one head bolt. That far went over by that coolant pipe. That's from a small block Chevy. It's only about 3 16 of an inch longer. Still got plenty of oil on the stick. Uh, because of all the lube and uh, other stuff I put down in the cylinders trying to get it running again or trying to get the valves moving again. Uh, I'm sure there's other things down mixed with the oil. Uh, mostly uh, PV blaster and some spray lubes and stuff. I don't think I put anything water-based down there. And I don't know that I used, I can't remember if I used any carb cleaner or anything like that that would break down the oil. But um, this oil filter is the one that was on that blazer out back and <clears throat> I let it drain out. So old oil, old filter, it seems to run pretty decent. We'll get all that changed out. I got a fresh five quarts of, uh, I think it's 1540 diesel oil. Got the zinc in it and everything. So I'm gonna get some fuel hooked up of some sort. Um, don't know if I'll do gravity or if I'll try to mess with that pump down there. I can't remember if it worked. I think at one point it did, but it's the old glass bowl fuel pump. And uh, I'm not sure if it still seals or not. So uh, let me try to get some fuel hooked up to it and uh, we'll get it cranking maybe. All right, I couldn't really find enough gas in a can to uh, rig up a fuel system. So I put a little two cycle in the little gas that I had. So much for trying to fill the float bowl. All right, we're gonna give it a go. First start in, uh, seriously have no idea. I think the last service record was 1966, somewhere in New York. So, here we go. <laughs> That's what's bad about these old six volts. They just don't crank very fast. Sounds like I got a valve sticking open again. She's drawing some vacuum. I think I was still having trouble with number four. Uh, maybe let me grab some starting fluid, something a little lighter, see if it likes that. You know, since it has been a year, my brain tells me I probably ought to check for a spark. This is where I get screwed up because everything's negative. Uh, it's positive ground, so everything's negative. So I gotta see if I have power to coil here. This is the negative side. All right. Oh, that's not good for a rotor button. Yeah, I get really confused. Like really, really confused. I just barely understand wiring when it's regular positive or negative ground.
Okay, two things were wrong. One, I didn't have the key on, that was my fault. Two, I had to hook up a ground wire to the coil body. I'm not sure why that makes a difference because most of the time I don't think they're grounded like that, but apparently this one has a problem with it. So now I've got spark uh, hooked up the fuel pump just to see if it's going to work. Dumped a little gas down it. We'll make sure I turn the key on. a lot. Yeah, that one exhaust valve must be hanging again. fuel pump yet so I got my Dasani gas plumbed into the carburetor
grown extremely great. Uh, I assume one of those valves is still sticking a little bit. You can see the gold dye coming out of the oil fill booth. Uh, my camera's about dead. I got it filled up with uh, vinegar. Trying to clean out the cooling system. The idle's on its own. I got some little gravity cans in there. Unfortunately, with the economy the way it is, this is just one of those projects I don't know that I'll be able to continue on with. So, uh, I'm probably going to push it for sale and uh, pass it on to somebody else to do something with it. I tested some of the interior stuff. The blower motor does work. Uh, the headlights work. Uh, you know, it's, it's a pretty complete car. and I've got, I've got all the original parts to go back with it. Uh, you know, it's just... difference the correct firing order will make I marked the distributor cap before I took all this apart and I marked the ends of the plug wires also but the problem was I marked the ends of these two wrong these plugs are not even in tight uh, I had this one marked six and this one was five but it rubbed off and uh, so I had those two crossed and that's why it was running rough all right, got the plug wires, should be where they're supposed to be. Got the spark plugs tightened up. I got a can with some gas over there. We'll just see how it starts. <laughs> Still pretty solid car. Key works and everything. It just uh, takes a little jiggle every now and then. It starts right up. All right, so I think I'm gonna end this here with the DeSoto. Uh, it runs awful smooth, starts up pretty easy, even with just uh, a gas can on the fender and a hose run to the carburetor. I'm not really sure what the future holds for this thing right now. Uh, I did drive it down the road. I'll put a clip of that in here.
That was when it was missing real bad. I uh, wasn't really sure what was going on with it before I figured out the plug wires were wrong. It's fairly solid, just the rockers and the edge of the floor inside. Uh, the seats are decent enough. It does smell like dead mice and you know stuff like that, but it did sit for a very long time. Uh, pretty amazing that the thing fires up and runs. It needs a few things, it needs probably a whole brake system which is around 450 on eBay, I think. And that's with you running the hard lines. Uh, it needs a freeze out plug for sure. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and change the oil in it because I got the stuff to do that. And um, just beyond that, miscellaneous maintenance and stuff that's been missed out on, uh, tires for sure. Um, so I'm not really sure what the future holds for this thing. I'm still, uh, up in the air on another project or two and if it falls through you know i may uh, end up trying to get this thing on the road and drive it myself so thanks for watching like and subscribe find me on instagram and uh until next time thanks